All right, hello and welcome to this guide on theory crafting tools that I use that I think would be very valuable for people who wanted to do their own theory crafting or even just do a little bit better of a job maybe of uh, creating their character, customizing their character, getting the items in a position or a state that they want them to be in to really maximize uh, the performance of their character or even just learn more about the game and how it works and become a better player. So I'm gonna cover several things in this guide. Um, we're going to start with some of the more, we'll say basic stuff, really just the in-game stuff. Some of you will already be pretty familiar with this stuff. Feel free to uh, skip ahead. I think out of all the things I'm going to cover here, the one that's going to be least known or um, the fewest people are familiar with is going to be Tunk Lab. And that's probably also going to be the most valuable. So if you're already familiar with the in-game stuff, if you're familiar with Last Epoch Tools, don't skip on Tunk Lab if you've not, if you've not heard of it because it is really, really good. But we're gonna start off with the in-game stuff and we'll begin with uh, something that's gonna be obvious to some of you, but to some of you, maybe not as much, especially if you're newer. And that's the character sheet in the game. You press C, you bring up the character sheet, it gives you all the stats. So that's to be pretty uh, intuitive, pretty relatively obvious for most people why that would be useful. But another reason why it's useful is because it updates in real time. So if you have particular stats that are built into say your skills or on hit effects, things like that, uh, if you have your character sheet up, you can actually see it update for you. So for example, if I press flame ward here, my increase, my lightning damage increases from 165 to 265. Now the reason for that is because in my flame ward, I have taken a couple of nodes, infusion and lightning ward, which gives me increased lightning damage. Infusion gives me increased fire damage, and then lightning ward gives me uh, a conversion from fire to lightning. And so I can see that happen in real time. This is really useful to make sure that your effects are happening in the way that you expect them to. Also to make sure they're not buggy, because that does happen quite a bit. You expect an ability to work a particular way, and then lo and behold, you go into the character sheet and you start it up. And if I didn't see that increased lightning damage, I would know it wasn't working. So this is a really good way to make sure everything's working the way you want it to. Um, and as, as you expect it to, uh, make sure that you're getting the, the gains that you, you want to get. Okay, once you've got that down, once you understand how the character sheet works, uh, the next thing is a new one, and that's the game guide. This was added this last patch. I think a lot of players who are more experienced kind of just poo-poo this. They don't think too much about the game guide because it seems like it's tailored for newer players. I don't actually think that's necessarily correct. There's uh, certainly a lot of things in here that are tailored to newer players, but there's a lot of things in here that are very valuable for theory crafters. For example, this increase, add, and more uh, gives me how the damage types are put together, what order they go into, exactly um, where it's going to end up in that equation. You combine that with uh, some of these other things like base damage in particular, know how, knowing how base damage works and then increase added more is the entire equation for how damage goes. So if you know how those two things work, you can very um, easily, well not very, very easily, but you can pretty accurately come up with how much damage you're going to do without actually even doing anything in the game. Uh, other things that are really useful are things like armor and protections, where it actually gives you the damage mitigation calculation. So if you don't know these calculations, you need to use them to make sure that your uh, theory crafting is going the way that you expect, that you're actually getting the right stats at the right time. The game guide is very, very useful for that. Okay, with that out of the way, let's cover some things that are not in the game that are uh, third-party apps that I use extensively when I do theory crafting and really are useful for pretty much anyone who's playing the game. Uh, particularly Last Epoch Tools is something that I go to multiple times every stream, every time I play the game, for its item database. Now currently there's only an item database in here, uh, but uh, damn it, the creator is planning on adding significantly more, including a skill tree system, which we don't currently have outside of the game right now. Uh, here's a preview of what's going to look like. This is going to be amazing. Uh, it's not in the game yet, though, so we can't use it yet, but you can see this is going to be exactly what we need to be able to kind of create our builds. But for now, we're just going to be sort of stuck with the database, which isn't really the worst thing. This is how the database looks. So to get to here, you just get to start off with your LE tools. So if I just go back to LE tools and then just click item database, I can get right to here. And from here, I can look up any sort of item in the game. I don't actually think anything is not in the database right now. It is updated as of beta 0.7.8e. You can see right here, damn it, make sure uh, to update us every time it's on here. So you know if there's anything missing. So if the next patch comes out, 
and you're not sure if the new items are actually in the database that are in the game, just check here and see what version the database is on. But we are up to date right now. It also tells you just how many things are in the game, which is pretty freaking cool. 569 total here, prefixes, suffixes, uniques, so on and so forth. Um, so you know, there's a lot of stuff in the game right now. Um, so from here, you can do a whole lot of things. So let's uh, just to start from, let's say you want to look at helmets, you want to look at uniques, you go in here, you click un unique on, you click on helmet, click on unique, and you can look at all of the unique helmets in the game. What if you want to look at the bases for helmets? We'll turn off unique, turn on basic, and there you go. Now you have all of the base items in the game. Uh, you can also do this for sets. You can do this for multiples. You can have uniques and sets in here. There is a legendary tab. It doesn't do anything right now because there aren't legendaries in the game, but when there are, um, that will allow you to, uh, to check legendaries as well. So that's pretty cool. It's already set up for that. Another really cool thing is you can look at prefixes and suffixes that go on the particular item uh, that, you're, that you're looking at. So let's say uh, I want to know all the prefixes that I can put on helmets. Here it, are. Here it is. I click on prefixes, and I can see every single uh, prefix that I can put on a helmet piece. I can do the same thing for suffixes. Interestingly, you can see there's only 17 prefixes, but there's 102 suffixes. That's because of all the new uh, affixes that have been added to the game for helmets and, and chest pieces. But uh, either way, you can look at one of these. And then if, like, if you want to see, for example, um, I know that affix can go on, but how is it going to roll on that item? So we're looking at armor here, but armor can roll on more than just helmets, right? So I click on armor, I see it can apply to helmet, body armor, belts, boots, and shield, but it's always 20 to 35. Well, you come down here, you scroll down a little bit further on the armor thing, and you look, and it tells you helmet rolls 35, body armor rolls 52, belt rolls 35, boots 35, shield 35. So you can go pretty deep into this thing and see exactly not only what affixes uh, you can get on items, but also what level of that affix you can get. So just do that again to show you one more time how it works. I go to gloves. All right, I'm in gloves. These are my, my base items. Here are all the prefixes I can roll. Okay, great. What about this damage over time one? Let's click on that. What can that roll on? That can roll on all of these things here. So I'm not even gonna read out that list, but there it is. Uh, they can roll to a maximum of 60%, but what about on the gloves? Well, we go down here. Gloves, they can roll 60%. There you go. But if I had it on an ax, it can roll 90%. So uh, if it rolled on a two-handed ax, 162%. So you can get a really um, accurate picture of what you can put on gear and what it'll look like kind of at its top and what your potential is with that. So LE database is super, super useful. Um, I also use it for idols. I use it for any kind of item in the game. This is usually the first place I go because I'm comfortable with it. I know how to get everything I need out of it. It's all here in a nice attractive display that I, I can get around pretty quickly. Uh, so I usually start with this and then when I'm going into heavier theory crafting or if I can't find it exactly in the way I want it to be, that's when I go to Tunk Lab. So let's take a look at Tunk Lab because this one looks like it's a lot more simple, but it's there's a lot of stuff here. There's a whole lot of things. And Tunk, who the creator of this, is constantly updating it and adding features that are just like pretty incredible really make a big difference on theory crafting so i'm not going to cover every single thing on here because like i said there's a lot um, and not everything is going to be useful all the time when you're when you're playing some of this stuff is pretty niche but just to give you a basic idea we'll start with the equipment stuff that's where most people are going to want to be so if i click on affixes here i'm going to get a similar layout from what i got with uh, le tools or last epoch tools but i'll get some extra information in here that's really nice for example, I get rarity. How likely is this to uh, to drop for me? What level does it actually drop? Some important information that we don't necessarily think. I don't think we see on uh, on Last Epoch Tools. We definitely... Actually, I don't know. We might get the rarity. Let's see. We, yeah, we do get the rarity tier. So we can get that on here. I'm not sure if we get the level tier. We might, though. We might get that as well. Like, LE Tools is really good as well. Um, but this is another way of looking at it, another display. So this is a, another option for looking at uh, fixes. And if you want everything all in one place, right now Tunk is probably a better place to, to get everything where you want it. Uh, here's items. So again, similar to LE Tools. It's more of a list. It's not maybe quite as attractive on the face of it, but um, it's, it's still a pretty streamlined way of getting the information you want. Uh, but some of the features in Tunk that are really valuable will actually come down here in the equipment. The Crafting Forge and the Gear Planner are where... I think most players are going to get the biggest bang for their buck. So for example, a crafting forge, I can take an item, whatever item I want. Let's say I want, I don't know, um, a wand. And I can pick my base. So 
whatever base I want, prophecy one. Let's go, let's go really high end. So it there's a prophecy one in there, and it tells me what its adaptive spell damage is, or whatever its base damages are going to be, base uh, stats. And from there, I can put in prefixes. So let's put crit chance in there. Let's put crit multi. I can change the tier of it, so I can see what I'm going to get potentially at each tier of the item. I can put my suffixes, of course, in here, mana, and uh, let's see, elemental protection. And so I can get a, a really good idea of uh, what it would look like if I crafted this up before I ever do it. So um, I can plan this out a little bit better than, um, you know, kind of just doing it by guesswork. Um, and this can be really valuable, particularly in cases where there are a couple of fixes where you're not really sure what you should pick. So let's say, for example, uh, you're trying to choose between critical strike chance and spell crit. So critical strike chance gives me an increase of 75% crit chance at its max at tier 5. Um, but I'm not sure how I would choose that over spell or why I would choose that over spell. So I, uh, I put spell crit in there and oh, spell crit's actually 120%. So just from that, I know if I'm running a spell, uh, I should be putting spell crit uh, strike chance in here because it's, it's going to be is going to be way higher. And then I can just combine and create my gear as I want it to be. This is a nice little feature, but it even pales in comparison to the gear planner, which is about as close as we get to a true like character build calculator it doesn't have obviously skills in it it doesn't have idols but this will at least get your gear where you want it and show you most if not all of the stats at this point i think it might even be all the stats when you first started doing it tunk did it wasn't quite all the stats but uh let's see for example sentinel level 70 i can start to build my character out i can put the gear in that i want uh, let's go ahead and take uh, a Solarum Helm for the crit avoidance. Oops, and let's put some prefixes on it. Let's do uh, cooldown recovery, and let's do set glancing blow. And then we can look at some of the new suffixes that are in the game now. The, the new helmet items. Let's see, melee fizz damage building a sword or a mace. Mana gain on smite, mana gain rive. Uh, let's take mana gain on smite, and then we can see here, I 10 mana gain on smite. If I got a tier five, that perfectly rolled. Um, and let's throw crit avoidance on there. And we can start to put these in, and we can actually see them update in real time on this. So in our defenses now, we can see we have 7% glancing blow and 56% crit avoidance at my average level for this gear. So this, for example, is this can roll 13 to 15, so this would be at 16%. Uh, 6 to 7, I think this just rounded up. Uh, crit avoidance 25 to 37, and we see here crit avoidance is at 56, so it's right in the middle. But if I just put max in here, I can see what the maximum stats are as well. Or if I wanted the minimum to see like worst case scenario, I can do that as well. And I can just keep doing this with my gear, keep throwing in more stuff, and it will update accordingly. And so I can get a really good picture of if I crafted these, these items in this particular way, uh, what's it going to do for my character ultimately? What's it going to end up looking like? And this is just a really, really powerful way of creating your your craft, your build, uh, without having any guesswork, with knowing ahead of time kind of what you're going to get and being able to really focus uh, what it is you're going to want. So um, I definitely recommend using this for any build you're going to make. And I use it, again, for every every build I make. So this is this is probably my favorite tool of any of the tools that i currently use i really like um le tools but it's kind of like more of a a base easy way of getting um a feel for the items that i need a look at the items i need this is where i really do the the heavy gear part of the theory crafting and there's more also in uh, tunk lab tunk lab's got a lot of different features so we can go into the classes and we can get a lot of uh, information on the classes we can even look and see what the skills are although this isn't like Actually, I picked a really bad one. I rip blood. We can pick this and see the skill tree nodes. They don't show how they connect, so not as useful as the LE tools uh, version will be when that gets up. Maybe this will get updated as well. I'm, I'm not exactly sure what Tunk's plans are for it going forward, but uh, it does get up, updated regularly. Some other really cool stuff in here, though, like Dodge Chance Calculator, shows you by the level of area and by how much dodge you have, how much what your dodge percentage will be. So um, Dodge is a, a, this weird system where it caps at 80%. So even if I maximize my dodge, run, it's going to 5,000 dodge. You see it never get, never goes over 80. It actually never even touches 80, 79.967%. But I can see how that looks by area level. So I drop it more and I can see as the area level increases, my dodge rating decreases with the same amount of dodge. Um, you can even do things where you, uh, you change the uh, area level. You can see by dodge rating. It's just, it's just another way of looking at the same graph. 
But uh, these kind of features can really help you with your planning. So ward calculator, how much ward am I going to have if I change my ward retention or I change my initial ward, my ward per second? Uh, how's this going to um, affect my ward in, in these particular scenarios over time, um, using or not using Exsanguinous? Pretty powerful stuff if you're trying to get a real good feel for your ward uh, without having to go out and just like test it in the in the real world, so to speak, in the game. So Tonk Labs, I definitely highly recommend taking a, a real good look at this uh, website and incorporating it into your gameplay just to make it a lot easier for you to plan out what you're doing, to even understand why things are happening to you in the game, like the defense stuff that he's got here is really, really good for that. Monster modifiers and scaling. Scaling is really good. Like how does uh, how does the arena scale? Well, here you go. This is how it scales. So if you're at wave 200, this is how much damage they do. And this is how much health they have. Same thing with Monolith of Fate. This is how um, things scale as you conquer timelines. We increase the timeline conquering. You can see the rarity XP goes up. Uh, you can see that the uh, the actual modifiers to the, the bosses go up or the enemies go up. So anything pretty much you want to know as far as like just raw data, there's not much that Tunk hasn't covered some way or another. So um, big props to Tunk for, for putting this in. It's made a huge difference on my theory crafting and on pretty much everyone who theory crafts. Um, and if you're not aware of this program or this uh, this app, uh, definitely take a look at it because it's going to be really, really useful going forward. All right, that'll wrap it up for this video. I really hope this helps you out. I hope it makes it a little bit easier for you to design your own builds. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Please uh, subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying the content in general. If there's anything that you think I can improve upon, please uh, let me know in the comment section. Also, I stream on Twitch about five to six days a week. I would love to have you there to join, hang out, check out the builds I'm working on. would love to have you. Also, I have a Discord where you are more than welcome to ask any additional questions that you have or just get involved in the community in general. Love to have new people come to the community. Our community is great, by the way, especially just the LE community in general, but uh, the community around my channel, community around Last Epoch and other streamers and YouTube creators is the best I've ever been a part of. So definitely worth your time if you're enjoying LE to get involved in that community. All right, thanks again for watching. Enjoy your time in Last Epoch.